Hi guys and welcome to another video. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at how you can create your own Fuji recipe. One of the really big draws to Fuji cameras is the fact that you can customise your JPEGs to emulate different film stocks and there are some really good resources out there like the Fuji Weekly website where you can go on, copy some settings into your camera and get some very convincing film like images. However though what happens if you want to create your own recipe? I found myself recently wanting to create my own recipe that is a little bit milder than the Fuji weekly ones for when I just want to shoot JPEGs with my own twist but maybe not emulate film. What I had been doing though was just taking my camera out and shooting different settings and trying to work out my own recipe with a little bit of trial and error. What I was finding though was it was really hard to do this because I would be outside on a bright sunny day, I would be tweaking these settings, it would look really good and then under a different shooting scenario like I don't know let's say inside my images would come out looking a bit weird. Now what I've actually found is there is a really good bit of software actually provided by Fuji that helps you make your own recipe and that's what we're going to be using today. So if you want to follow along what you're going to need to do is head to the Fuji website under their support and software section and download a bit of software called the Fujifilm X Raw Studio. It's on there for both Mac and for PC, so it doesn't matter what you've got. And importantly, you don't actually need a quick PC either, and we'll talk about that in just a second. So in terms of what else we're gonna need beyond just the software, first of all, we're actually gonna need our camera. So for me, I'm gonna be using my Fuji X100V. Now the reason for that is because we need to connect the camera to the computer to be able to use the software. That's because when we're changing settings in the software, what it's actually doing is sending the image back to the camera. The camera's doing the editing and then sending the file back. This does two really good things. First of all, it means you don't need a good computer or laptop because it's actually the camera doing all the hard work. The other good thing is whatever recipe we make, we should see the exact same results on the camera because it's the camera doing the hard work as well. In terms of plugging your camera into your computer, you're gonna need a USB-C cable, so I've got one here, and you also might need to change some settings on your camera so that it connects in the right mode. For me on my X100V, that means going to the menu, to setup, to connection setting, PC connection mode, and then USB raw conversion slash backup restore. That way when you plug your camera in, it should do exactly what we want it to do. We're also gonna need some raw files to try out our new recipe on. And importantly, the raw files must be from the exact same camera that we're using to apply our recipe to. So you can't use say like an X-Pro3 raw whilst you've got your X100V connected. What we're also gonna do is try and make sure these raw files are from a bunch of different scenarios. So I'm gonna try and get a landscape, maybe a portrait, a bright sunny day, maybe an interior shot, maybe a cloudy day, because whatever recipe we make, we wanna make sure it works in a good variety of different situations. What you're also gonna to wanna to do is try and find raws that have been shot with the dynamic range settings turned all the way up. Now this is quite hard to do unless you're gonna go and take some shots right now. What I'm gonna do in terms of Lightroom, and we'll log on to Lightroom now, is this. So what we're gonna do in Lightroom to try and find RAWs that have had the dynamic range turned up is look for RAW files from my camera that have been shot at ISO 640 and above. Now, if you're using Lightroom CC, you can actually apply quite a lot of search criteria. So we're gonna search for my camera, so my Fujifilm X100V, I'm then also going to search for medium or high ISO. Now I think medium ISO is actually any image that was shot from ISO 250 up to something like 6400. So what we're gonna to need to be careful of is we're looking for images shot at that 640 and above. If you don't have this screen up on the right hand side, if you press the I key on your keyboard, it should appear. And we can see whatever image I've selected currently has an ISO of 250, so that isn't one we're gonna use for this video. Now, like I said a minute ago, I'm gonna try and pick a bunch of raw files from a mixture of different situations. Like this image here up at the top, this was shot at ISO 640, so that's one I'm gonna use. And to export the image, but as a raw, if you right click on it, export and use original plus settings, and just save them all in the same place. So I'm gonna save them in this file I've made on my desktop. Now I'm just gonna click through and find myself a whole bunch of different raw files in different situations. Like I said, try and make a mixture of like a portrait, a landscape, a bright sunny day, a cloudy day, and if possible, an interior shot as well, all with an ISO of 640 and above, because there's a reasonable chance that we would have shot them with the dynamic range settings turned on. So now that I've selected some different raw files that I'm gonna be using to try out my recipe on, what we need to do now then is plug in our camera. So like I said earlier, make sure you've got your camera settings correctly set up and you need to make sure your camera is switched 
on. Now that it's all plugged in, let's open up the Fuji XRAW Studio and hop back on to our computer. So the first thing we're gonna do then is take a bit of a tour around the screen. Up at the very top left corner, you can see the camera that you've got connected and the firmware that it's running and also your battery level. You need to make sure your camera's got battery because like we said earlier, it's your camera doing all the hard work. Just underneath that, you've got the file structure of your computer. Make sure you just navigate to the right folder. So for me, I'm navigating to this own recipe folder and here's the raw files across the bottom that I'm gonna be using today to mess around with my new recipe. If you click on one of these images down here, you'll see that it will load up the histogram and it will also show you an awful lot of information about the, the settings you had set at the time. And importantly, one of these is gonna be the dynamic range setting. And if it's at 100%, what you're actually looking for is at least one image that has it set to 400%. And I think one of these, let's see, oh, this one here, this does have a dynamic range of 400%. And this is the image I'm gonna to use to start with. If you're using a folder that has lots and lots of RAWs in it, I found that this kind of strip across the bottom can take a little while to load. So if it takes a little while, don't worry about it too much. It should load up though after a couple minutes. Then over on the right hand side, we have the really interesting part. So up at the top, you've got some user profiles. So you can actually save some recipes to your computer. And then just below that, you've actually got all of the profiles loaded into your camera right now. So I've actually got a bunch of the Fuji Weekly ones set up currently. And if you click on one of these, it will actually edit the raw file that you've got selected using them settings. So if you're a bit curious as to like, what would it have looked like if I had tried a different recipe in the moment, you can have a look at that now. So I think this was actually originally shot using the Portra 400 one. So I think this is the one that I had originally on here, but you can see the different ones that I've got set up. And then just below that, you've actually got all of the different JPEG settings that you typically see on your camera. And importantly, if you've clicked one with a dynamic range of 400, you'll be able to pick the other options. However, if you've got an image that was shot on something else, say this one here that was shot on a dynamic range of 100, it will be locked into that lower level. So this is why we wanted some higher ISO images with a chance that maybe we would have shot them with a higher dynamic range. So I'm gonna stick with my image at the minute with that one of 400. And this is where, if you've never played around with the settings in your camera before, you can have a good play now to understand what's going on. So I've currently selected my Portra 400 one, and if I change my color, for example, down to minus four, this is what minus four color would look like. I find when you change a setting, it can take a couple seconds, because if you think about what's happening here, the computer is sending the image to the camera. The camera is then editing it with its own processing power and then sending it back. So there is a little bit of a delay and it does feel a little bit clunky at times. So in terms of the recipe that I wanna make then, I'm actually going to start with the Portra 400 recipe and tweak from there. Now, I like the dynamic range 400, which means it's adding quite a lot of kind of flatness to my image. The way it actually does this is it underexposes your images and then boosts the shadows in post. I kind of like the flat look that that gives, so I'm gonna leave that. We're then gonna head down to Classic Chrome. That is my favorite one, so I'm gonna leave it for this recipe. It's probably my most used film simulation, if I think about it, other than maybe across the black and white one. Grain effect wise, small and strong is definitely my preference. I feel like if you're doing a black and white recipe, then maybe you wanna go for large and strong, but I find small and strong my favorite when it comes to color. The color chrome effect, I quite like it, but I think maybe strong's a little bit too much. I'm gonna leave the color chrome effect blue on weak, kind of makes your blues a little bit richer in your um, skies. Now importantly, this white balance is probably the most important setting and I recommend that you have a good play with this. An awful lot of the Fuji Weekly presets rely on this an awful lot to achieve that look. Now what I'm going to do is actually change the color balance to auto and then apply a white balance shift. The Portra recipe has a really strong cast applied to it and it always looks a little bit too green for me, but I like nice warm images. So I think we're gonna mess around with some colors kind of over here somewhere in this kind of like orangey red tint era area of the image. If we then have a look at the highlight tone, I actually quite like my highlights to look a little bit blown out. So we're actually gonna raise the highlights up a little bit. Let's try a plus two and see what that looks like. Yes, I quite like that, I think. Shadow tone, minus twos are actually making the shadows a lot brighter, which kind of contributes to that flat look, which I'm gonna keep. 
Color wise, plus two. I'm actually gonna raise this slightly. I like mildly saturated images, which kind of goes against the plus three, but I think this is quite a subtle effect. Anyway, sharpness, I'm actually gonna chuck this down to minus four. I think the digital files look more than sharp enough on their own, and they don't really need any sharpness applied. Noise reduction, now this is a bit of a funny one. I think with color images, I don't mind a little bit of noise redu reduction being applied. When it comes to black and white, I recommend that you leave this noise reduction on minus four, because if you're not applying noise reduction, but you flip to black and white, it kind of, kind of looks a little bit like noise. So it's quite good from that point of view, but I'm gonna change the noise reduction here to zero. I don't mind a little bit of noise reduction being applied. Clarity is a really funny setting when it comes to these recipes. Now, clarity, I love the effect that it makes on the image. The downside is all of the Fuji cameras lag when you apply this setting. So every time you take an image, it will come up and say, I think, please wait just after the image has been taken. And that really annoys me. So that's definitely one to think about. If you're unsure about clarity, make sure if you do like it, that you're considering the fact that it will make your camera a little bit slower when it comes to taking images. So I think what I might actually do is up the clarity just a little bit. I think with this recipe, I'm happy to kind of forego a little bit of speed for just a little bit of a clarity boost to my image. And I think that's probably about it. Now this is where it gets a bit of fun. So what you can actually do now is now we've made this recipe down here is we can save it to the camera. We're gonna click on save here and it lets you pick which slot you want to override. So I think what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna get rid of my cine still preset. So we're gonna override custom slot five and when you hit save, it will ask you to give it a name. So I'm gonna call this, um, I don't know, probably Goffy's base, something like that, and hit OK. That's then actually gonna save this to your camera. And you can see over here now on my custom camera presets, I have got Goffy's base applied. Now the next step is to actually now take this and apply it to some of the different wars that we had. So I'm gonna click through the different wars now and apply it and see what I think. So this was quite a similar image taken on, I think the same day, it's bright and sunny. Let's click Goffy's base and see what happens. And you know what? I actually quite like it in terms of this image. I think it looks pretty much how I want it to. Now this one over here is very different. This was shot on a completely different day. It's not sunny, it's overcast. And if we apply Goffy's base, what do we think? Now, I don't mind it. I think maybe the highlight blowout's gone a little bit too far. So I up this highlight tone to plus two. I think what I'm actually gonna do is tone that back to plus one potentially. What we're gonna have to make sure though is we do this change back on our original image that had the dynamic range setting of 400. So we're gonna come back to this one and we're gonna drop that highlight tone back down just a little bit. I think we're gonna go plus one and we're gonna save that. I'm gonna do it over the top of Goffy's base again and save, keep it the same name and hit okay. Can take a little while sometimes to save these settings, but don't worry about it. We're then gonna come back to this image that we had earlier. I'm gonna apply Goffy's base to it again. And I think it looks a little bit better this time in terms of protecting them highlights just a little bit. Now, if we go for an image that's really quite different, there's this one here. This was an interior shot and apply Goffy's base again. Let's see what this looks like. And you know what? I actually really quite like this. I think this works quite well, even though we're inside. Maybe it's gone a little bit too orange. Maybe we could tone the warmth down just a little bit, but let's try it on another one again. Let's try this one. This is outside on again, another cloudy day. And do you know what? I actually quite like this. I think this is what I'm happy with. We've saved this to our camera now. If you did want to export any of these, you can click on one of your images, click your new recipe. And then if you click this convert button, this will actually export a JPEG based on your new settings. And you can see that down here. So I've now got this JPEG exported. So then I think that's about it for this video in terms of how you go about making your own recipe. I'll chuck the recipe up on the screen now that I just made. This is a recipe that I think I'm gonna go for when I want slightly warm kind of looking images, but I don't want that kind of full film look effect applied. I hope you've really enjoyed this video and I hope you've got something out of it. This software is actually pretty good. I think it's the first time I've ever used a camera manufacturer's own software and actually enjoyed using it. It's a little bit clunky, but it definitely gets the job done. If you've used it before, I'd be very interested to know your thoughts down in the comments. Thank you guys for watching and please do not forget to like and subscribe. I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.